by the Walter, the Soul Walter Jones Show. I'm he. It is the weekend edition. <clears throat> Baby, voice is leaving me. I sang just a little bit too hard at the place called Church House on Constantine's Day. It's Sunday for those of you who, y'all get it, right? Good. Y'all kind of smart. I want to talk about bad advice. Oh, boy. Some folks on here ain't gonna like it. And I don't care. I'm gonna talk about something here that I've been wanting to talk about for a long time now. And I figured today is a good day since I got your attention this afternoon on a Sunday. And some of you deciding to hang around the house uh, or inside. Yeah, it's cold outside. Um, anyway, bad advice is an epidemic <clears throat> it's everywhere there's so many people giving so much bad advice that it's killing you all naturally and spiritually some of you are jumping off cliffs and you're drinking deadly poison and some of you are leaving good relationships because you heard bad advice and you should never, ever, ever um, find yourself in a situation where you are asking someone for help. And when they tell you what to do, you take every word verbatim and you go home and consider what their words are law. And the scriptures help us in the New Testament especially uh, that um, the Berean church, I often refer to them, didn't just receive any word from just anybody. All right? So bad advice is everywhere. And I want to talk about this because especially among women today, women are getting some horrible relationship advice from both men and women. Yeah, yeah. clicks are the worst. Triplet is saying... Too much bad advice, especially clicks, and especially if you are part of a tribe, uh, the Democratic tribe, the Republican tribe, the Independent tribe, Conservative tribe, the Green Party tribe, the Tea Party tribe, the Pentecostal tribe, the Kojic tribe, oh gosh, uh, the National Baptist tribe, Lutheran tribe, the Catholic tribe. Everybody is part of a tribe. The Afro Kappa, Afro Kappa Kappa Psi tribe. Oh man, the Masonic tribe, the, the the Skull and Bones tribe, and everybody's part of these tribes. And uh, you're part of your family tribe, the Jones tribe, the Johnson tribe, okay, the Triplet and the Pitts tribe, okay. Everybody's part of one. And you got to be careful not to get caught up in these tribes to where you can't really see the light of day. Right? I don't know what happened here. Phone um, got turned around. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Facebook just turned my phone around. I don't know how that happened. I don't know why. It just automatically just turned my phone around. It just did it on its own. So now I got to, this is weird. I may have to come back on because the phone just exploded. <laughs> it's just, Tommy, it, it turned my phone around and it won't turn back. Uh, let me see, hold on y'all. I guess it, it didn't like what I was saying. Let me turn the screen around, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's weird. Yeah, Tommy, I've been hacked. That that has never happened before. Because if I talk to you like this, my um my phone won't on my end won't let me uh won't let me talk to you. 
Let me try it again. Hold on. That is weird. Okay. All right. Well, I guess I gotta hold it up. Hold on. I guess I gotta hold it up like this. <laughs> Y'all forgive me. It's not my fault. It just exploded like that. Mm-hmm. Not my yeah. fault. Hold on. It just exploded like that. Then it got dark. Hold on. I was on the road. Uh, those of you on YouTube, be patient. Then it got dark. Okay. That looks weird. Those of you on YouTube, be patient. That looks so weird. Um, yeah, I may have to restart. Facebook say it's like folk giving bad advice to the masses. <laughs> Yeah, this is pretty bad. See, I'm look what I'm looking at my picture, and you see how it's not. It's this. Yeah, and yeah. What Michelle is echoing because I turned the volume up on this here. I'm gonna just finish the show like this because if I start all over again, it's just. Anyway, bad advice. Um, here's the thing I want to say to you. All right, here's the thing I want to say to you. Um. If you turn on the television and you watch MSNBC or CNN, you're going to have a whole lot of people who are part of the left, or the Democratic Party, who follow whatever advice that's given on those particular stations. And they swear by them, they like law. If you turn on Fox News, you're going to get a lot of conservative audience, or those of the Republican Party. And you're going to get entertainers. There's some, um, Sean Hannity is an entertainer, and he tells you that it's, he's an entertainer. He's not a serious journalist, right? But nevertheless, his entertaining words are taken serious and like law. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so this is the world we live in. Bad advice is given to us on all of these networks. When we go to church, we hear bad advice from the saints. We hear it from the usher when we walked in. We hear it from the, the, the drunk deacon. Well, he may not be drunk now, but he will be tonight. And we get this bad advice uh, from the missionaries of the church and the mother's board, and we get it from the pastor and his wife. Bad advice. It's a, it's, it's a, and the sad thing about it is that many of you are not walking in the spirit uh, where you can discern these bad advice and so you continue in listening to it and you don't read the scriptures for yourself. It's bad advice everywhere. Uh, but I want to say that there are those who are life coaches out there who are giving, giving horrible advice. Horrible advice. These counselors and some psychologists are giving bad advice. Really horrible. Um... So, um, I'm, when I was married and going through uh, a rough time in my marriage, we went to a counselor. And the counseling session was going okay until she started to cry. Once she started to cry, the counselor shifted. It was a man. The counselor shifted and began to take her side and spent the rest of the session being pulled into her tears. Me being who I was at the time, I didn't allow the session to continue, so I ended the session. I couldn't take it anymore because I saw the shift. I saw how this man with degrees on the wall got was pivoted. He began to be pulled into this woman's tears. And then he began to give advice that I felt was non-biblical. Yeah. So when you guys are giving advice and when you're seeking advice from uh, people, right, Pitts? When you're seeking advice from people, check the credential. I'm not talking about the, the, the uh, papers on the wall. No. But... Do your best to try and check out the lifestyle first, if you can. I don't really know people who go out and get things without researching them. You don't buy a house without researching the house. And some of you, unfortunately, you go out and buy cars and never research the car. 
you never do what's called the car facts. You don't check the, the fin number to see if this car had an accident. No. You just go out there, you see a beautiful car, and then you buy it, and then you realize you start having problems with the car because it had been in an accident, and they fixed it, and they covered it. Understand? So our relationships should be the same way. We should check the, the car facts. And we don't. We get bad advice. So what I've noticed is a lot of women out there are seeking advice from men. And a lot of times these men pander. Is that the word? These men pander to the women. Why? It's popular. Number two, ignorance is lucrative. It's popular. And to get a wide audience just broadens your brand. And then comes the sales. When someone asks me a question, I'm going to tell them the truth, whether it hurts me or hurt them. Mm hmm first check the person you're dating, marrying. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff. But after that fact, Pitts, once you get to the counselor, you need to make sure that this counselor is in tune, intact, and have a connection somewhere. First, he should, be have, he should have a connection with uh, uh, his craft or his industry. He should know, or she should know their industry. But what happens, Brenda, get to see you, when we who are Christians go to secular counselors, that's where we mess up. Because we have given up on Christian counselors because we think, because we see so much scandal in the church, we just have thrown all of them out and then we seek secular counselors. And, and many people in the church have mental illness and a lot of them don't know it. Once they come to the realization that there's something going on dysfunctionally, or some kind of cognitive decline, they go to a secular counselor because there's not too many Christian psychologists out there, at least those who may not have a, a practice or an office or what have you. So they go to secular people, and all these secular people can do for a Christian is give you patchwork, can give you a temporary fix for something that is eternal. So they begin to tell you these things that you need to do that goes against the teachings of the scriptures and goes against what God has instructed in the household of faith. Ernestine, good to see you. So you got to be careful when you, when you seek after unholy uh, counselors and psychologists, all right, and these life coaches, they're going to give you things that are of the flesh in many cases. And they're going to bring in the gospel of inclusion in, in a sense. They must include a whole lot of things. Never go to the world to find out what God thinks. Come on, Natasha. I love that. All right? So you have to be careful because then they're going to put you on things, and then, then you're going to be hooked on those things. And some of it might be medicine. All right? I do not uh, believe emphatically that we should never touch medicine, those who are mentally ill. No, I think medicine is a last resort, not the first resort. It's the last resort. But there are many people who have come to their senses after proper talking to, uh, 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 keeping up with them, uh, having accountability, uh, changing their eating habits and dietary, uh, causing, to, to removing them from the home. And in some places, in some cases, removing them from churches. There's some churches that are causing those in the church to, to continue to stay mentally ill. It's, it's what I believe. All right, some, some people who are married probably need to separate because it's causing you to stay further ill. So medicine is absolutely the last resort. Uh, when you find a counselor or life coach that only leans one way in every scenario, you better run. They usually have an agenda. Deatris Carter, and that is my purpose of this show here. I see a lot of men who are trying to counsel women and what do they do? They counsel gullible women. They counsel silly women. They counsel women who are bitter. They counsel women who are looking for somebody to uh, 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 enable them. 
uh, someone who like a drug addict who needs somebody to help them buy the drugs or give them money for the drugs or things like that, okay? And that, so these women are looking for someone to take their side. And so these men who are usually very handsome, got mus muscles everywhere, they should be on the People's Magazine, Sexiest Guy Alive. Uh, these women are, are being pulled in to the looks of these men, and they have become uh, uh, pied pipers in a sense, and they're leading these women into their lair. Why? Because, or how? Because how they talk to these ladies. When a woman comes to these men for, for conversation or counseling, these men always take the side of these women. Always. Counseling is not about agreement. No. They take the side of these women and then they do what's called male bashing. See, the women are already male bashing. We see it on Facebook a lot. We see it on Twitter. We see it on Instagram. We see it on YouTube. A lot of male bashing. Men already knew, no, we're jacked up. We already know we got issues. We already know that we, we cheat a lot. We already know that we lie a lot and we deceive. We already know uh, that we sometimes may steal to get our way. We already know this stuff. And so what happens? The, then the women begin to bash and bash and bash on social media. And then what does it do for the man? It don't help him. It don't help him heal. It don't build him up. It doesn't correct him. He just sees the bashing and then bash on bash on bash. And that's all we see. And nobody's helping this man. That's all he see. From time he was born, his parents told him what he, what they expected him to be and do. He was not, he not allowed to cry. No tears. He's always supposed to use his brute strength, and, and he can never allow anyone to take advantage of him. He's, he's always the, the strong guy. Okay, and, he, and he's shown this. He's shown this, and then he gets into these relationships where here, here we have it. So the women are not building them up. All right, so then who comes to the rescue of these women? Other men. They say, yeah, I'm a man, so I know these men. These men are horrible. Yes, you're right, sister girl, let me tell you. And then boom, boom, boom. And then when you look at some of these men who are giving this counseling, this counseling to all these women who are thirsty, many of them are just thirsty, uh, and they're tired, and they are alone, or they're hurting, or they're in bad, toxic relationships, they run to these men because the men... Uh, you know they are they they just are ideal it's a it's almost like a fantasy island place to go to and these men are always giving them something positive that is that usually bashes the men that they're with and many of these women are on their way uh usually leave that counseling session on their way to some kind of divorce court <laughs> or they get they get ready to buy uh, 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 rent an apartment and leave, or they can. It's, it's usually some kind of separation that happens afterwards, and that's a problem. Unfortunately, it's uh, natural for us to gravitate towards those that make us feel better without the understanding that feelings are deceiving. Yes, and I talk about this in, in, in at length and detail in my book, The Four Women That Men Desire. I talk about these men who are counseling these women in this way. Uh, I just didn't know how to say it. Uh, uh, <laughs> come on. Uh, let me tell you, T T N. <laughs> I like, I was trying to find a clever way to say your name, Taylor. Uh, this is what's happening. Nicole, your sister, the sisterhood is broken. We say this a lot because we already know that the brotherhood is broken. It's been broke. It's always been broken, okay? But the sisterhood, you would think that there'd be some more, a little more strength in that because y'all have gone through so much beating. Mm -hmm. Tila, Tila. <laughs> she corrected me. <laughs> Thank you, Tila. All right? Um, I, I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's turning into an issue that needs to be addressed, and that's why I'm addressing it. My book will probably be one of the most... Um, upsetting books there is out there on the subject of these types of subjects of relationship. People are going to hate the book, especially women are going to hate it a lot because I'm stepping on a lot of toes. I'm already stepping on the men's toes. I'm already doing that in the book. 
but I'm really stepping on the ladies' toes in, in some areas because I do not believe in deceiving a person. I do not believe, Shantae, in telling a, a woman a lie. I, don't, I used to lie my way into beds, into sheets, into pillows. I used to lie my way into body cavities, okay? That was me. I tell y'all this story a lot. I was the hoe, okay? And they called me the church hoe. That's what I was, all right? I didn't have to chase, though. They chased me. I just sat there and played the piano, and they came to me. They, they, they brought their plates to me. They put their hotel key in my pocket. You understand what I'm saying? When I walked in my car, and they came to my car. So I didn't really have to chase anybody. I don't chase women. They say, you, 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 you a skirt chaser. No, I ain't. No, they pants chasers. I just stand still and they just give me whatever they give me. And then I, before I know it, I'm in, I'm in the hotel room with them. I don't have to do that. Why do women feel that they do, that they should do this or can do this or what have you? They're not happy at home. They're not happy in their lives. So they figured, you know, my, my clock is ticking. So this guy right here, he's single. This is what we're going through. Sisterhood is broken because of trust issues and insecurities due to how men have manipulated our feelings. Yep, Pitts, I know. I know. There's, there are going to be several women on here who are going to say different things. And some of it is going to be a lot of male bashing. Yes. Rarely will you see or hear or read in comments where women are going to agree with this type of teaching. Rarely. Will you read where women are going to say, You're right, brother. The, the sisterhood, there's some issues going on with them. And in many cases, the sisterhood themselves did it. It is self-infliction, and you can't blame the brothers for everything that happened to a sister. You just can't do it. Some of the sisters just are deciding to get even with manhood and, and nothing, and they've, they've never even been with men. Okay, they, they, they haven't had an issue, they haven't been married, they just see what they see on the TV, in pop culture, and in music, and in movies, and what have you, and then they come to the conclusion, this is what I'm going to do. Before, before I get into this sister's here lifestyle, I'm going to create my own. And so you cannot continue to bash men or blame men for your downtrodden when you keep doing what you do. You keep doing what you do. Even if a man started this, why do you have to finish it? And I think it's, in, it's imperative that we teach the truth and stop lying to the women and, 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 and patting their backs and telling them they're doing a great job or here, let me tell you this. And then these women, on their, they, they're on their, way to, they're on their way home alone and eating bonbons, crying on the couch because some guy gave them some bad advice. You gotta, you gotta get, get, you gotta get this good counseling in, okay? And then I talk about in my book about this bad advice that people are giving the women on how to even get into a relationship that's in scriptures. Uh, uh, I really enjoyed Shante Charles. I don't know if she's here. I think I saw her come in. Some are taught by bitter mothers or female elders. Yep, bitter mothers, female elders, the mother's boy, the first lady. Mm -hmm. uh, my dear, bad advice has been given to a lot of the women. Uh, bad advice. It's not just men. It's it's a lot of bad advice. But I was uh, watching a show with Shantae. She was on... Whose show was that? Um, whose show was that? Uh, uh, Sharon, I think it was. And she she was talking about the uh, how women are trying to cater their relationships after the scriptures. Oh, there she is. Shantae is here. How women are trying to cater their relationship after the examples that we see in scriptures with couples. And you should not be running after these type of examples because you're going to find yourself having a problem. Again, my book, I talk about this in detail. You keep running after Boaz, you're going to find yourself having a problem. Ladies, you're going to find yourself having a problem. You need to stop listening to Naomi in your life. Stop trying to cater your life after Ruth. You're going to find yourself seducing a man at midnight. And all he got on is a robe and his, his dangle, dangling parts is dangling. He ain't got nothing to gird him. 
Uh, br brothers don't go to bed with girdles on. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. If he sleep with a with pajama pants on, it's still dangling. It's loose. He ain't got a hole. There's a slit in his pants so that when he have a, a urge to pee, he can get up and go and he just stand there and it just fall out the hole and he pee pee. Right? So he ain't got no tighter whities on. And you brothers out there who sleep with your tighter whities on, you nasty. They ain't, they ain't, they ain't tight. Well, they still tight, but they ain't white when you wake up in the morning. Okay, this is the kind of advice that these these cute little brothers ain't gonna give y'all. All right, so he sleep with his stuff dangling. He needs space and room so that he can go pee pee at three in the morning. So if you Ruth, you go into his house at midnight to lay up under his dangling pots. You wanna be Ruth? That's fine. Go find your cousin, cause that's who Boaz was. <laughs> Yeah, you people fail to separate principle from uh, uh, imitation. Oh, I'm looking for my Boaz. Oh, you're going to find him, all right. You keep looking. There's a whole lot of Boazes out there who can't wait to find to wake up to you up under his skirt. And then I look, up, I look at the Proverbs 31 woman. I do not believe she was one woman. No. Y'all made her one woman, but this was a es, es, escapade, whatever that word is. It's expose, is that what it is? All right. This is this woman or women, it's, it shows it's the principle of the diversity of women. That's what Proverbs 30. Who could find a virtuous woman? And this woman can be. This is the proper hermeneutics of this, this, and y'all can disagree with me all you want to, but this is the possibility of whom this woman can be. This was not a real woman. It was a poem. It was an acrotic, acrostic, I, I can't remember what they call it, and it's a poem that where it's like an ant, it's like an acronym, pretty much. It's an acronym where it spells out something the fbi spells out federal bureau of investigations amber did i say it right acrostic that's what the poem is so it's who w can find a virtual room blah 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 and then there's the next letter there there's the next letter and it spells it out that's what an acrostic poem is and that's what it is Plus, you can only qualify if you're married. Natasha, come on. So all these single women are saying that I'm a Proverbs 31 woman. If so, then how is it possible that you ain't got no husband? So it's it's the it's the diversity. I think it's the most one of the most brilliant poems there is in the scriptures. Stop trying to chase after Boaz, stop trying to chase after a single woman. In the Proverbs 31, because what you're doing is when you chase after that one woman, then there's some other elements in there that you are not that you can't do uh, because of cultural situations. And so then you think, oh, I'm, you're going to you're going to chase all of these attributes looking for for the rest of your life. That is not the mandate. And then we can talk about Solomon with the Shulamite woman. Are you trying to cater your life after her and his relationship as well? Okay, uh, do I cater my life after David and Jonathan? I mean, do do you cater your life after after Abraham and Sarah? I mean, these relationships were in the scriptures to tell us a story, but not that you cater your life after these romantic relationships. It's telling you something to give you, uh, 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 to teach you a lesson on the love that these two had. And how we can apply the principle or the lesson behind the love to our love for Christ or Christ's love for the church. Not for you to cater after it. And that's why so many people are caught up on the old way of, of, of uh, paying tithes. Because what they've done was they, they said they said the, the tithing was pre-law. And that's true. It was pre-law. So we should do what the, they did in pre-law. I can tell you a thousand things that they did pre-law that you ain't doing. 
You take the one pre-law of tithing and the 999, you won't do. What is that? It's your, You're choosing to do these things. Why is this a problem? Because you were born and raised into an atmosphere, into a traditional uh, um, uh, area of life where this thing, this has always been this way. And this is why the South is the way it was or the way it still is. The South is still, many in many territories, are still racists, are still bigots, are still xenophobes. Why? Because this was the way it has always been since 1619 uh, and prior. It has always been that way in the South. So when you go down there, the spirit of bigotry is still there because it's always been that way. So in churches, the reason why you do a particular act, whether you pay a tithe or whether you speak in tongues or, or whether you do foot washing or communion, it's always been that way since birth. So for someone to do a Facebook Live and try to turn you from doing something that you've been doing for 45 years, you can't. You just can't. Your tradition is too wrapped up and tied up in you and it's sound to you with sound doctrine. And so uh, cognitive dissonance sets in and it's, it's hard to teach a new dog, an old dog, new tricks. I think that's how it goes. It's passed down doctrines. And the Pharisees struggled with this. Jesus struggled with this with the Pharisees. They could not see no other way but this way. That's why they, 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 they allowed their oxen to fall off a cliff and somebody to die on the Sabbath day because on the Sabbath day we're not allowed to do nothing. Where you, your livestock is dying and this kid over here fell in the hole so you can't, you can't do this because of the Sabbath and you can't, all, this person is starving to death, well wait till Monday. <laughs> It's the Sabbath. So he's trying to tell you, you, you're paying your tithe, but you're forgetting a weightier matter. And what was that? He said, justice and faith. You're forgetting a, a weightier matter, the heart of mankind. Look after the widows and the orphans and the strangers and the poor. Don't just uh, uh, get caught up on the law of the letter. That even in your territory, you when you're speeding, it said there's there are cases where I had to run the red light, I had to break the law so that I would not have an accident with someone. Understand, I'm approaching a red light, but unfortunately something is in the way, and if I stop at this red light, this pedestrian is going to die. So what do I have to do? I have to run the light so that, this, so that I can protect life. What is more important? Obeying the law of that red light or, or obeying the law of God to preserve life? I chose to preserve life. You can punish me with a, with a speeding ticket or running the light ticket or the flashlight or the red light ticket. I don't care. I'll pay the ticket. But this life has been preserved. And that's what Jesus was saying with the law. We're getting bad advice. And it needs to stop. Acrostic poem is like an acronym. Yes, in Hebrew, every verse starts with the Hebrew. Yes, that's what I, thank you, Amber. Come on. You better teach this. Uh, they now using Abraham and Sarah, Gomer and Hosea, <laughs> when God was trying to prove a point about Gomer to Israel, not a way to date or stay married. Can you imagine people trying to use Gomer and Hosea? Which one of y'all are Gomers? Which one of y'all want to use that example? It's amazing. So don't tell me because they did it pre-law that we should do it. Where in Scripture did it tell us that we have to do everything pre-law? That was the culture of that time. Abram paid a tithe to Melchizedek because that was the culture. That was something that they did in the Middle East. And then what he did, he took the 90% that was left and then he gave that away to a pagan king. Nobody's doing that. Who paid tithes? But you told me I should be doing it because it's pre-law. Because that's the custom. And y'all use Abraham as a, an example. Because the, the book of Hebrew used Abraham as an example too. But what are you doing with the 90? Are you giving it away? You're not, aren't you? Then you're living, uh, you're living in some kind of bubble. You're fooling yourself because you get, you're caught in a tradition. 
that's not working out for you. Y'all are getting bad advice everywhere you go. You're getting bad advice. And no one is going to God themselves and seeking the truth of the matter. Who's doing it? And that's why you're deceived so much. White evangelicals were deceived by the Republican Party to vote for a racist man because they were tribal. They were, they were part of the party, many of them in the South. It was the way it, that, that, uh, that trend, that tradition, that doctrine of bigotry, it's still, it's still there. There are remnants among the white evangelicals, I will say. There are remnants out there that are not like that. But there's so many others that are like that. And it's a shame. African Americans or black Pentecostals are the same way. We're no different than white evangelicals when it comes to uh, um, being tribal and getting bad advice. So I'm going to end this by reading this wonderful advice that Jesus gave. Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing and making more disciples than John. And though John, Jesus himself didn't baptize them, uh, his disciples did. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. And he had to go through Samaria on the way. Uh-oh, not sure why he did such a thing. Jesus, why you go through Samaria? Eventually he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. And Joseph, well, was there. And Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat weary, wearily uh, beside the well about noontime. And here it is. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. And then the woman was surprised. Surprised. For Jews refused to have anything to do with the Samaritans. Black Pentecostals. Y'all are the same way. White evangelicals. You are the same way. Look at your churches on Sunday morning. It's lily white and dark black. And I ain't talking about the paint. Or the wallpaper. And she said to Jesus, You are a Jew. I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Mm -mm -mm. Jesus replied, If you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. See? Oh, man. You see what I'm saying? If you only knew, okay, uh, it's almost an offense. It's almost like she had tried to offend him. What are you doing over here? But the offense didn't work. She, he says, okay, but if you only knew who I was, I would give you living water if you just knew. But, sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket. So what is she talking to? <coughs> She's speaking to her knowledge. <coughs> she has created or boundaries have been created in her prior to her meeting Jesus, there was a boundary already there. Redlining. There's a wall there between two people. And that is the conversation that she's bringing up. He didn't bring that up. She brought it up. Says, you don't even have a rope. She says, and this well is very deep. So, she spoke to his inability. Where would you get this living water, by the way? Mm. She opened up the gate. This was a floodgate. I love it when people ask me a particular question about my salvation or my belief system or about religion. That's what just happened here. She opened up the gate. And, and besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? Mm. Now she's dropping names. And how can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoy it? When people ask me, I'm sitting among the elders and the PhD and the people with master's degrees at the table, they begin to drop their credentials. And then they begin to drop names. Oh, you you into what? Oh, that's what you do? Hey, have you heard of? And the next, the next word to come out is somebody who's supposedly greater than me at the table. Anybody experience that? Then Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. 
Yeah, y'all superficial. Yeah, y'all keep doing the same thing, same thing over and over again. Y'all know y'all always say is this, that's the definition of insanity. You go and you go pee pee, you got to pee pee again a few hours later. You eat a big meal and you think your body's saying, I ain't going to never eat again. You ever get so full, you say, I ain't going to never eat again in life. And three hours later, for some of y'all, one hour later, you go up there, up there for seconds and then thirds, right? Yeah, that's what's happening here. You're going to thirst again, and but those who drink the water, I will give, will never be thirsty again. It, be, it becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. Y'all are getting these bad advice, and the advice is given to you is that they give you fish. And you eat tonight and go to bed, you're going to be hungry for fish again. And because they never taught you how to fish, you're always going to that same person for the fish and they got you y'all getting advice from the same people who keep feeding y'all stuff that you got to keep going back to you don't make a change because the word repent means not just words out of my mouth i repent i repent no it's a lifestyle it means go the other way you see please sir the woman said give me this water oh you see what happened here he was able to give a scenario where she got thirsty mm -hmm. he convinced her in one setting that she was thirsty and that whatever he gave her she will never thirst again how do we know she said please give me this water i want this and that's what i see from people who are trying to counsel folks they give them this this they make them more thirsty for them to come back. All right, we're coming back next week for this next session. Okay. <coughs> and the people leave there thirsty. <coughs> uh, then I'll never be thirst thirsty, she testified. <coughs> she says, give me this water. But let me tell you what's going to happen if you give me this water. I used to do sales. And one of the most satisfying sales was when the person said yes, and then the person began to testify about what this vacuum cleaner going to do for my life. <laughs> I'm trying to tell y'all, then I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here to get a, a water. This vacuum cleaner is going to bless my family. I'm going to clean my living room, dining room, and I got carpet in the in my bedroom. I'll never have to buy another vacuum cleaner again. Go and get your husband, Jesus told her. How did he know that she had a husband? When you go to somebody who's giving you advice, good, sound advice, they should know by your character, the way you talk, some key words and codes in your conversation they should they should be able to tell you especially those who are christian counselors through the unction of the holy spirit and through the word of knowledge or the word of wisdom or through the spirit um uh the discerning of spirits they should be able to know and tell you i see something there where's your husband Absolutely not enough counsel to get free, just enough to keep a customer. She said, he said, hey, wh where your husband at? Uh-huh. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. And Jesus said, you right. You sure don't have a husband? Man. You see what's happening here? No male bashing. Jesus is talking to a Samaritan woman. If he wanted to get the Samaritans on his side, he would treat her with so much care and love and respect, and, and he would agree with her. And he would give her uh, advice about the things, really, uh, that she shouldn't do, but he wants to keep her as a customer, so he would give her some smooth sayings. Oh, man. But what did he do instead? He could have said, some of these life coaches would have told her, oh, you're, you're, you don't have a husband? Okay, I, I, okay, that's cool. All right, well, here's the water. I'm going to go. No, he says, 
for you have had five husbands and you aren't even married to the man you're living with right now. Y'all shacking. You certainly spoke the truth when you said you ain't. <laughs> mm. Did you hear that? She had five of them. She had five husbands. Now she's shacking up with a man. And she told this man the truth. Oh, I don't have a husband. And he recognized a truth. Wow. The worst person to accept advice from is a person who doesn't respect nor understand your character, period. Man, sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. Now she's, now she's qualifying him. Mm, yeah, now she's trying to vet him. Uh, so tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount... Now she's got a problem. She, When she met him, there was already a boundary there, a tradition. Whenever you see this Jew, always know this. Where she get this from? From birth. So when she, when she thought that he probably is a prophet, now she wants the truth. She's been hearing from her parents her siblings, and from the community, this is the fight between the Hatfields and the McCoys, uh, the, uh, the, Pontigu the, the, the Capulets and the Pontigues, or whatever they call them. This has been the fight for uh, hundreds of years. Now here's someone here is, is speaking my language, and he's a prophet. I'm getting ready to get down to the, to the matter. I'm getting ready to get the truth of it all. Then she said, hey, let me ask you a question. Since you're somebody that I can talk to now. Where are, he says, aren't, uh, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship? And Jesus' reply is a kind of a reply that I'm sure I would have given to. Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on the mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship. While we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes through us, the Jews, but the time is coming indeed. It's here now. Ain't that something? He's still not using warming over, smooth sayings, male bashing. Okay, he, he telling her, uh, you really want that answer? You really want that? Well, you people really don't know the answer. So let me tell you the real answer. Here's the truth of the matter. Now, whether it hurts or not, Jesus had to tell her the truth. Y'all don't even know who you're worshiping. But the time is coming indeed, it is now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. It's like he didn't really answer her question why it wasn't important. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is a spirit, and so those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And the woman said, I know the Messiah is coming. How she know the Messiah is coming? How does she know? How is she sharing in with the Messiah's coming? Because they, they Samaritans are like rejected Jews, like half Jews in a sense. Mm -hmm. We've got Africans, we've got African Americans, we've got Jamaicans, Bohemians, uh, Belizeans. Uh, we got them. All, they all dark skin, and they all been told of the Savior. Mm -hmm. I know the Messiah is coming, the one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Jesus then told her, oh yeah, by the way, yeah, that's me. And then it, it, right here, right here. Just then his disciples came back. They missed all of this. And they were shocked to find him talking to a woman. Wow. Mm-hmm. 
ethnically mixed and despised. Shante says, the disciples was getting ready to reverse, in a sense, break up the conversation. Get away from them. It's like what white folks did back in the day. They still do it today when the little kid is talking to the little black boy at the store. Hey, 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 don't talk to that little black boy. Why am I? Just don't talk to him. That's what the disciples, they came and saw Jesus talk. Hey, hey, hey. You don't talk to them people. They apparently have not learned yet the plan of Christ. They were shocked to see Christ, a Jew, talking to these people. They didn't get it yet. And that's what I'm seeing today. Many Christians still don't get it yet. That's why they only witness among their own people. They don't get it yet. Peter was like Jonah was. He was a xenophobe. He wouldn't witness to the Gentiles. That's why God had to put him to sleep and let him see a sheet of meat and say, rise, Peter, slay and eat that meat. He said, I can't eat that. That's unclean. Why? Because those Jews, those disciples, and some of the apostles were xenophobes. They wouldn't they thought that Jesus was come to only rescue the Jews and to set up his kingdom in the Roman Empire the, the, uh, among the Greeks. Okay? Get rid of all the other folks. It's just going to be us, Jew, and nobody else. That's what they felt. They, they missed it. That's why he had to come the way he did. So the disciples were like, huh? They were shocked. But one of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want with her? Or why are you talking to her? Get away from her. And the woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village. You see what's happening? She saw them coming and they, hey, 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 why are you talking to her? And she said, oh, I got to go. It's amazing. I see this among Africans and, and Europeans who live in America. Hispanics and Asians, I see it. Muslims, I see it. Come and see a man woo, who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? Now she's questioning the validity. And so the people came streaming from the village to see him. Ain't that something? Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. It goes on. God is for everyone. Paul, the apostle. Human nature, we only want our own kind to prosper. That's what's happening here. That was the message here. I'm going to have to remind, got a phone call that caused me to miss all that stuff. <laughs> hope you're not giving bad advice, Pitt said. <laughs> no, not, I hope I'm not, because especially I'm in scripture. All right? So I just wanted to come on just a little bit, and unfortunately it turned into an hour. Uh, Y'all are getting bad advice. I don't need y'all to start listening uh, to the Spirit of God just a little bit more. And if you can't recognize His voice, then you probably don't have a relationship with Him. So, get one. You try so hard to get a relationship with a man, you try hard. Some of you ladies try so hard to get a relationship with these men. And these men know this, and so they lead you into their lair, and they eat of your fruit. And then they're done. They spit you out like a seed, and they move on to your sister. Why? Because they can see that you're thirsty. They know that you're thirsty. But pay close attention to his speech, his talk, his suave. Suave is not always negative. It could be good. It can work to y'all's benefit. I mean, that's attractive. But pay close attention to everything around the swa. <laughs> Ask some questions. Ask around. All right? Be careful. Bad advice is everywhere, and it's going to cause many of you to go into bankruptcy, spiritual and naturally, and emotionally, and financially, um, and, and everywhere. Bad advice is everywhere. And, um, um, read a book, we please. Best book to read is the scriptures. That'd be great. Try that. Um, 
my book's coming out Valentine's Day and I have some fun tidbits in there that's uh, going to spark your interest uh, some of you are going to find yourself in that book and you're going to call me and cuss me out good the best counselors are the ones who give you um, who take his heart and he put it on the table take his heart put it on the table he show you his heart. Here's my heart. That's my transparent spot right there. Here it is. And let me tell you who I was and who I am right now. When he do that, sit down, get you a cup of tea and listen to him. And if he tell you the stuff that he done done in life that will embarrass another guy if he told it, listen to that guy. He might be sent from heaven. <laughs> and if he's exposing himself just to help you and send you on your way and don't want nothing from you, no money, no sex, no nothing, no dinner, he's just putting his heart out there and then to help you in your relationship and he, you may never see him again, he might be sent from above. Mm, come on, come on, Cynthia. He might be the one that was sent from above. I told you all this story of a man who came to me and, and asked me, should he go back to his wife? And I said, why would you want to go back to your wife? You cheated on her. Many of us cheated. So it's okay to go back to a woman if she lets you back in. If she lets you, because women are more forgiving than men are. And if she, if she lets you back in, then by all means, going back in and y'all talk it over. I said, but you don't need to go back to your wife. He said, why, Brother Jones? And I said, because you are still a hoe. And he laughed on the phone. And when he got through laughing, he says, you are right. I says, I know. I said, that, I know your wife. She's a good woman. She's a good woman. She loves God. She loves her children. And she loves your nasty, dirty self. She loves you. But I will not allow you to go back in that house. And if you're thinking about going back, I'm going to pick up the phone right now. And say, get, uh, put your mama on the phone. Mm -hmm. I, I ain't done one of these in a long time, y'all. So bear with me. Put your mama on the phone. Yeah. Uh, uh, Trees. Hey, Trees, how you doing? This is Sir Walter. Hey, y'all all right? Y'all, how the babies? They all right? And he he in the room with me. I said, shut up, shut up, shut up. I got this, I got this. Y'all all right? Good, good, good. Listen, 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 listen. Trees, uh, hey, you seen your husband lately? Uh, no, I ain't, I ain't seen him in a while. Okay, uh, he called you lately? No, he ain't, he ain't called you lately. Okay. Uh, he ain't write no letter? No, he had no. He ain't come by the church then? You, he ne not, nothing. You ain't heard from him a while. Mm -mm. Have he went by to see the kids? He have not? Okay. All right. Listen. L listen. <clears throat> Tanya, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Uh, bro, bro, bass, 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 bass. You know, so, listen. If he call and you see his uh, number on the phone, don't answer yeah, I know. I know you. I know you love him, baby. I know you love him. I I love him too. Not like you love him. Don't answer that phone. No. Why? Why? Don't, well, let me tell you something. He a hoe. And he hit me because he's still in the room. He he throwing stuff at me. He throwing he 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 throwing books. Hey man, what you doing? Hold up, bro. Hold up, bro. I'm trying to save your woman. Cause right now, you still out there want to play around. You go and have a great time and and pick up all of the. Venereal diseases that you want, syphilis, Ghana to the rear, X lax. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know these these diseases. I don't, I gotta Google them all. Okay, go on, pick up all of them and have your way. Okay, but if he called, don't answer the phone. No, 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 no. I suggest you block the number if you can. You ain't got to see these new smartphones now. Especially if you got an iPhone, you can block his number. No, no, no. 
Tell, no, don't answer the phone. He's still a hoe, baby. He's still a hoe. Bye. Bye-bye. All right? That's what you have to do. And I told him that, and he agreed. And guess what? That was a few years ago, and he never went back to his wife. That had to have been five years ago or more. He never went back to his wife. Never. Okay? Why did he never go back to her? Because to this day, he's still a hoe. A young lady, a friend, said she cusses her spouse when he does what she calls dumb stuff. She wanted me to agree with her, and I would never tell a woman to cuss her spouse. And she was upset with me for a while, then she finally said, yes, Miss D, you're right. See, when you give good, sound advice, people will listen, and they know the spirit man will wake up in them trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you, Cynthia. It'll wake up in him. I'll never forget the scene of a man and his family coming to church. He was a rascal. He wasn't saved. But the man, the pastor called an altar call and that man got up and came to the altar with his hands lifted and he said I want God I'm tired of my life his wife in the back with the children the wife got up and came to the altar and did the same thing now I'm, I'm messed up guess what happened next the children got up and came to the altar and the whole family had their hands lifted because they wanted God. You know why the wife and the children wanted God? I need y'all to put that in the comment section. If you're on YouTube and you're on Facebook, let me ask you a question. Why did the wife and the children want God that day? Now, Facebook is a little slow. With the comments. So I'm going to be patient. I'm going to see who the first one. Why do you think that the wife and the children wanted God on that Sunday morning? All of a sudden. Who's going to be the first to give me the answer in the comment section? And when I think about that, I still sh just shiver. Cynthia, yours came in first. You might not have typed it first, but yours came in first. Cynthia said because they filled, they they filled the man. I think and that might have been a typo, but I know what you're saying. Uh, Veronica says sound advice comes with freedom and solitude. Yes, the actress says the husband was leading them to Christ. Tanya says because the husband came forth. Cynthia, yes, followed. I knew what you meant the first time. Yes, they seen and experienced their dad submit. Victoria says leadership. Mm -hmm. Shante says follow the leader. You see what that did? So ladies, let me tell you. Head was in order, Lamaria says. Woo-wee. That's it. When I saw those family members come down, I was broke, broke down. And I was on the organ that day. I was broke. I was a mess. If the mama had came, it would not have affected me as much. If the kids had came after that, it would not have affected me as much. But the fact that this man brought his whole... Ooh, it's messing me up right now. I'm going to have to hold myself. He brought his whole family to church. And then he decided to do something that most men won't do. He decided to get to know God that day. And his family followed him. He led by example. Let me tell you, ladies... No, no, I'm talking to the brothers. Brothers, when your husband go to the crack house, brothers, let me talk to you. When you go to the crack house, your family ain't following you. When you go to the strip joint, your family they ain't following you. You got some families that might do some stuff, but they ain't following you. 
When you go down there to rob the bank, the family ain't following you. You know? Mm -mm. Not the family who really love you. They ain't following you there. But when you give your life to Christ, your whole house wakes up. So that same Peter who was a bigot <laughs> went to Cornelius' house, the very house who he would have been tested prior to seeing that sheet of meat. He went to that house and preached the unadulterated word of God and Cornelius' entire house was saved. And signs were shown in the house. And all this time, they could have lost their lives waiting on him to follow. Come on, Cynthia, did y'all see what she just typed there? That man led the whole family to everlasting life. The one guy. He could have led them to hell or led them to life. And he led the whole family to life. Brothers, that's how much power and persuasion you have over your family. And when they know you love God, they're going to follow you because you follow Christ. The whole Cornelius house will say, come on, Tanya. Tanya, you better preach this. The whole house, my whole house has always been saved. My whole house. Whenever the kids come over, they know what kind of house this is. I raised them to know that this, as for me and my house, we will worship the Lord. So when I was married, she was saved and my kids were saved. That's just the way it was. There was no other way around that. And if I, when I went out there and did my dastardly deeds when I was messing up, I hid that from them. You know why I hid that from them? Because I didn't want my son to follow after my footsteps. I didn't want that. And I showed him what my daughter did. So I hid my dirt from them so that, so that I could clean this mess up. And I, I cleaned that mess up and returned back to my family. Because I didn't want them to go to a place where I was going. That's the type of authority a real uh, 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 solidified man possessed. There it is. So when you give an advice, make sure that it's goodly advice. And it may make them cuss you out. That's all right. Take the blows. And people have inboxed and texted me and, and emailed me with advice on something that I knew that the answer that I was getting ready to give them was going to make them cuss me out, be upset with me. How dare you tell me that I was wrong? Baby girl, you was wrong. You was wrong. The brother who gave the advice uh, a few weeks ago, he was, uh, you know, the Dear John letters. What's the brother with the muscles? I ain't saying his name, but he was giving advice about this man whose woman is getting fatter. She's becoming obese, okay? And he don't, he don't like her physique anymore. Well, he never, he didn't like, he didn't want her to get b bigger. And he didn't know what to do. He said, figured, in, do I leave her? And he says, we, I told her what to do or she won't do it. And this counselor gave this man, no, was it the man? I think mean, he, yeah, he was, he was giving this man advice. And the advice that he gave the man, I shivered at the advice because I says, oh, no, this is not good advice. This is not good. This is not good. And I shared, now watch this. And this is going to upset some of you because some of you I shared it with here and some of y'all ain't going to like my answer. I don't care. I shared the video to about 10 women and nine of them agreed with this man. Nine of the women agreed. Only one woman disagreed. And the woman, the one woman who disagreed, I knew she would. That's why I sent it to her. And I know why they agreed with him. Why? Because what he was saying, some of them were experiencing it. And they needed candy. 
Number two, he was male bashing. It sounded good. But he didn't give the proper advice because he only addressed the man. He didn't really address the woman. And when you're in a counseling session talking to two people, you can't stay one-sided. When my children fight, and my daughter come in the room and say, Walter hit me, I don't tell Walter to come in here so I can beat him for hitting my, his sister. No, I don't always do that, no. I say, Rebecca, yeah, what did you do to provoke him to hit you? It seems unfair to ask him that, right? Well, Jesus Christ asked the same question. Now, matter of fact, the Apostle Paul brought up some things, too, in the Book of Romans, I think it was. Talked about, if you provoke a person to sin, if you are eating something or wearing something that is provoking this person to anger, God is going to hold you responsible for this person's anger and sin. Don't seem right, does it? Mm. So, Walter Jr. hit you? Mm -hmm. What did you do to cause I'm going to still punish him. But what did you do to provoke him? And what can we do to stop you from provoking your brother and pushing that button? So the advice that the brother gave was about this man going into a marriage without thinking like a husband. And my advice was, he don't know what a husband is. How can you become, how can you think like something that you've never been, number one. Number two, you don't know what kind of household this man come from, so he probably never seen a husband. Yeah, that's called sound counseling. Yep, negating being wants to come on. So, to give a speech, and all he did was preach to about this man's problem and how he needed to fix his problem by his woman, his wife is getting fatter. So he was preaching to the brother and never brought up the issue of the woman that still, when you get through preaching to the brother, she's still going to continue to get fat. How do we deal with her now? Because... Her body belongs to the man. So the, 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 the response the women were given was, yeah, but his body belonged to the woman and he should be, wait. When you get through deflecting, he still got a problem. His body, which is the woman, is still getting fat and undesirable. And she will do a whole lot of stuff for her finances, for her intellect, and by going to classes and getting degrees and, and pleasing her boss on the job and all these things. But as it pertains, pertains to her husband and her weight, you're supposed to love me in spite of it all. But your body is not yours. You see, when, when we talk like this, the women sign off. The woman says, this is heresy. I disagree and all that. And that's the problem we have. Because the, the, the advice you're getting is bad advice. Two people went in there with a problem. Not one. That's because he's not a husband. Come on, Cynthia. You got to stop giving this bad advice. All of the all of the plays in effect, never seen, no understanding the husband's role. You see, you know? So how do we, how do we, how can, how do you know how to be a wife if you've never been one? And your mama might have been a bad wife. She might have been a horrible wife. So you may have come up under an environment where you've never seen that. So how are you going to tell somebody? You can Google all you want to. But a, a woman who never had a baby, now she's pregnant, and then she has this baby, she, the only thing that works to her favor is instinct. And then she can ask other mothers what to do for this, what to do for that, what to do for this. But other than that, she's pregnant. She's never been a mother before. And when she has this baby, the hospital don't give her a manual this thick on what to do for a brand new baby. There's no manual. Instinct kicks in. So if two people come together in the Lord, marriage, 
then God will teach the man how to be a husband. Sometimes this is why some of us have failed marriages. We were never taught or trained, the actress. We don't know. We walk in this road blindly. Got to learn and grow and humble yourself, Shante says. One of, one of the greatest relationships and marriages that I know is Shante and Robert. I tell them that a lot. Shante and Robert Charles. When you see them, you think they were like brother and sister. And what I mean by that is that they like they like best friends. We should we should cater our relationships after Shante and Robert. Look at how they talk to each other. Look at their Facebook posts. When he posts, she is supporting them mess out of him and he do the same thing I've been in their home not physically but I've been where we were talking about we were trying to I was trying to get some lyrics to a song or what have you and then she was uh, uh, she was videoing something and or she was inboxing me and it, it was uh, audio and what have you and the husband was in the background and then and then they 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 cracking me up because you can see or hear that they love each other, and they didn't just get married last year. See, they're still acting like newlyweds, and they've been married for a little while. Why? Because what she just said. Learn, grow, and humble yourself. Karen says they have a great marriage. Why are we catering our relationships after people like this who are not famous, who are not ball players, million millionaires and billionaires and politicians. Why can't we just find someone who's just common Joe Blow? And I'm not I'm not saying that to to belittle you, Shante, but your average person on the street. Why can't we just cater our relationships after that is real. She her and her husband's relationship is is what we call the um, what what you call it when you see these kids want to be like the ball players? Do so they be called they become role? What they call them models? Is that what they call them? Every time you ask somebody about a role model, we always drop a famous name. Trust me, if I get married again, I'm gonna say I want to be like Shante and Robert, not uh, Barack Obama and Michelle. Although that's a another amazing relationship, I don't have to go that high. Why can't I go right next door? <laughs> I want to be like my mother and my father. If they're the greatest marriage I've ever seen, my mother and my father's marriage is the greatest marriage I have ever seen on the earth. And then my 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 uh, my uh, pastor and his wife. And then I sprinkle it with some of y'all's relationships. <laughs> there are some great marriages to model. Some just think that that's boring. And it's not. They are just that fit. That's some amazing relationships that uh, Sukina and um, Milam, Charlie Milam and Sukina, those two, they're not here. I guess I'll have to find a way to tag them. Those two, if somebody can tag them, Charlie Milam. Those two, their relationships has always been strong. I envy, I've always envied their relationships in marriage. Envy them. They they act like, like they just met. Best friends. They laugh and joke with each other and have a great time. Those are the marriages we should cater our lives after. Now, this is sound advice. I'm hoping that you would take this home with you. Great marriages be, began with great, solid foundations. Yes, yes. And there's a whole lot of them out there. Don't give up on it. There's some great marriages out there that we can live by. And they, they might be remnants. But I, I, as much as you may say, those of you who are, might be Republicans or those of you who didn't, I didn't vote for Barack Obama either. But if there's anything that that man gave to America, he restored our love or respect for marriages he and Michelle they showed America something it doesn't matter what your political stand is you 
cannot argue. And if you argue with it, it's just because you hate them. You hate them. But you cannot argue that one of the greatest relationships and marriages that we've ever seen in the public, in politics, is Barack and Michelle. I don't remember seeing that kind of relationship in recent history out of someone like a president. I didn't see it. I didn't see it in the Bushes. I will say George Bush and his wife, I, I did, I, I, I actually love George Bush's wife, George, George Jr. <laughs> I loved her, what, her I, I love her still. What is her name? What's George Bush, not, not the, the one who just passed. Um, what is his wife, what is her first name? I love her, she was always to me very poised, dignified. Just, again, it doesn't matter your political stand, but I, I just, something about her, I really respected, I like her. But you still didn't see that relationship that you, that you saw with the Obamas. I, you sure didn't see it with the Clintons. It definitely wasn't there, and for obvious reasons it was. Thank you, Amber. No, 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 not Barbara. Barbara died, right? Barbara was George Bush, George Sr. I'm talking about George Jr., the last George. <laughs> there, her, her. What is her name? Not George's mom. Laura, thank you, Amber. Laura Bush. The one prior to that, uh, I will say that Ronald Reagan's wife was... Uh, their relationship was close. Was they were friends? They were best friends. You could tell they were really close. And I know that was the second marriage. So that, that should prove to some of y'all that second marriages can work out. Their relationship was close. Close. I love their relationship. Uh, the Reagans. Um, but with with her, she was more of the boss. <laughs> yeah, Reagan. Miss Reagan was more of a girl. She was girl B. Obama is would be I consider girl C. Y'all like what's that? Well, read the book. It's coming. Uh, uh, what about Bill and Hillary? I said that already. Uh, I will say that Jimmy Carter and, and his wife is another relationship that I admired. I I love Miss Carter. What was Miss Carter's name? What's her name again? Her first name. Another down home, just just a sweet woman. Uh, you better like who you marry. Yeah, you better like who you marry. Come on. That's good, Shante. Uh, saints that look to ungodly relationships as goals will always have a problem because most of them are spiritually out of order. Amber Rogers. Uh, yes, there is a whole lot of good marriages, Tanya. Come on. On Christ, the solid rock of sin, <laughs> Demetri Pitts. Uh, he sees her as his equal. Obama, Shantae, that's it. And that's what makes their relationship work. Uh, Cynthia, uh, President and Mrs. Obama were a great example of marriage, kind of like the Cosbys on TV. Yes. Uh, notice she says on TV. <laughs> Thank you for fixing that up, Cynthia. The Kennedys. Well, uh, Don, the Kennedys, no. No. With the Kennedys, Mrs. or... Uh, Onassis, <laughs> um, she was definitely a girl C, extremely, extremely girl C, um, and unfortunately, um, he just went home and had babies with her, and he didn't respect her as his one and only. It's a, it's a tragic. Thing because he has he he was always a playboy when he was a congressman I believe he was John Fitzgerald and unfortunately he didn't know and I I can say the same thing I didn't know how to treat my wife either I was a scoundrel too I just I was young and foolish and didn't know how to love her Rosalind Carter thank you Amber sweet lady so I'm um the Kennedys I can identify with his misbehavior because that was me. When you get up in power like that, you um, your stuff don't stink. 
<clears throat> and the women are everywhere and you don't know what to do with that kind of newfound fame. And so you married to a woman, but when she don't go with you everywhere and you out there doing whatever you do, you can get caught up. Ask me how I know. Again, I'm probably one of the few transparent men out there that will tell you I did that stuff. So that's why I can tell you. I can show you. All right. I got a few counseling sessions this week from a few couples. I got a couple couples. One couple, they're not intimate anymore. And there is a reason why they're not intimate anymore. And I got to find out what that is. And I'm going to tell them both the truth, whether they like it or not. I ain't got to see them ever again. All right, y'all. I think I'm done. Uh, for those of you who came in late, the phone flipped on me. And that's why it's looking for, I'm, I'm looking like I'm all close up to the camera. <laughs> um... But um, my phone doesn't show that. And I, I don't know why it flipped like the way it did. That never happened before. Uh, tell, uh, tell who? Tell bro I said, oh, yes, I will. I will. Uh, Bass, I'll tell, tell him I said happy birthday. Rodney Jones, my brother Rodney Jones' birthday is today. So... Those of you who know my brother, you can uh, tag his name in the happy birthday. Uh, Rodney Jones taught me how to, how to search the scriptures. He taught me how to do, he taught me proper hermeneutics, how to exegete the scriptures. And so, I give back by having him come and do my Sunday school lessons on Thursday because he, he don't do them anymore, he's so busy, but... He did them for a few years, actually. If you go into any of my records on Spreaker.com and on YouTube, you'll see me and him for a few years teaching the scriptures because uh, he's my favorite teacher. Uh, this was a powerful session, and the devil is mad. That's why it flipped. Cynthia, I know. It, it flipped, and I almost turned it off because I haven't eaten yet. It's 5.50, 6 o'clock, and I probably need to eat lunch, dinner, something. I ain't eat nothing. But I just needed to get to this real quick because there's another show that's going to come on that I like to watch. I call them the uh, the Evangelistic Trinity. Uh, and they'll be coming on at 7 o'clock, I, I think. I'm not sure. This is, um, uh, sir, this is a greatly needed teaching uh, both in and out of, of church. The actress, amen. Context is very important. Ooh, bruh. Context is so important. Context is so important. Um, <laughs> how do I say this? I heard a counselor say, and I didn't agree with her, but I'm kind of leaning on agreeing with her. Here's what she said. She said, men cheat to stay in the marriage, but women cheat to leave the marriage. That's a tough one. Lena, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Ah, Lena is here and I told her, I told y'all I didn't eat yet. Lena be getting on me about my eating. My bad, Lena. Trust me, as soon as I turn this off, I'm going to find, here's, here's a coin. <laughs> I'm going to find me a sandwich. But she said, women cheat to leave the marriage, but men cheat to stay in the marriage. She's right. And men lie to protect his wife. I added that. It makes no sense, does it? Nope. So here's the problem. Popeyes tonight, Don? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of feeling that way. I'm kind of feeling that way. I'm kind, I'm kind, I'm kind of feeling pop the, the, the anointed Popeyes might be. Yeah, Tanya, <clears throat> let me say this as I get ready to go. <laughs> I'm Kodrick, so I got five closings. All right. 
I'm going to say this and close it down. And then every Wednesday I do my, my relationship show. So go to the Wednesday show because I still got to finish the crazy girl show that I did Wednesday. All right. I'm going to say this again. Uh, that's because the man feel if he does it, you should forgive. But if the woman do it, he can't take it or figure so easy. Cynthia, you hot. You are hot. You might be hot figuratively and, and physically too. You, I, I got to go to your pictures and troll your pictures and hit the like button and you know I'm trolling. <laughs> Don't y'all hate when people do that? They go to the pictures and they hit all all your pictures. They hit the like button. You you can see that your notifications going off. You say, somebody trolling my pictures. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Demetrius 6. Oh, are you saying it's 6 p.m.? Is that what you're saying? Um, here, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Men lie because he don't want to miss what he have. He don't want her to leave. All right? He cheat because of a plethora of reasons. One, he ain't getting it at home. And if he is getting it at home, it's not enough for him. All right? So he goes out. And he cheats, he gets it because it's just another hunger. It's another type of hunger. Okay? Pitts want me to close. I got to close this. She said, oh, six closes. <laughs> okay? He has a hunger that's not being taken care of at home. And whatever the void is at home, he, he feels that he has to get it somewhere else. But with no plans of leaving the home. So he cheats so that he can stay in the marriage. He needs to fulfill this portion, all right? Some people go into polymory, is that what it's called? Polymory, where it's like he got his woman, she got her man, and they know that. That's the arrangement that they have. What's the word, y'all? Okay, so he, but when she cheats, though, she has already tapped out. She's done. And once she cheats, it makes it quicker for her to leave. <clears throat> makes a lot of sense. But, yes, yeah, poly, polyamory. Thank you, De Deatrice. Polyamory. And I talk about polyamory in, in my book. Um, I just couldn't remember how to say it. I know, Pritz, that's nasty. All right? So, this makes no sense to those who've been getting advice from your same old preachers who never studied psychology, never studied sociology, never took a class in counseling. Just they only go by what they know in scripture or what they in their and their wives they he always bring up he and his wife, he and his wife, he and his wife. And what he and his wife are doing don't necessarily mean it is is what you should be telling them to do. Okay? So the advice is bad. It's bad. And we don't think outside the box, we who are in, in, in what y'all call Christian dumb. There's no such thing as Christian dumb. But nevertheless, because there's no king. Who's the king in Christian? <laughs> y'all say Jesus. No, no. Jesus didn't create. Yeah, okay. That's, that's another show. That's Theology Thursday. All right. So when you're getting the same advice, hello walls. <laughs> Okay, same advice. Go back to your husband no matter what he does. Okay. Same advice. Uh, you're wondering why this stuff is not working because nobody told you the raw truth that your kids are getting on the street. They're getting the truth. You're not. Mm. Everybody don't have the same experience. There it is. They don't. So my book is going to bring out these things that most relationship books won't tell you. They ain't going to tell you. But I'm going to tell you stuff that I did in my marriage. I did with other women. And it's going to embarrass. It's going to seem to embarrass me. But I'm writing it in a book. I've gone beyond the embarrassment. I'm in, I'm, so I'm putting myself out there as a sacrificial lamb to show y'all why men choose women like y'all. What are he looking at? When he see you, and then how it changes over time, for the positive or the negative. 
Because he can see you as a piece of meat when he first meets you. And then you can do something to him where he began to see you as his soul mate. And he said, oh, I was wrong. Because men were horrible at discernment. <laughs> it's going to be better than Steve Harvey's book. Don, if I had some, I gave all my money in the offering. I was in uh, Indianapolis. I, if I had a little more money, I'd be cash apping you. I received that in Jesus' name. Yeah. But I, they love Steve Harvey's book. Some people didn't like it. But they're going to hate my book. <laughs> they're going to hate it. And then they're going to go back. Five, ten years, or after a bad relationship, they're going to go back to my book and say, Oh, I get it now. I was that girl that he warned me about, but I threw his book in the garbage. Uh, if sin felt bad, we wouldn't done it. Come on! It's so God forgive us. And Ooh, Cynthia Sutton. I got to shut this down because you... Hey, Don... That money I was going to give you in the cash app, listen, listen. When it gets to you, can you send it to Cynthia? I appreciate it, thanks. Uh, horrible at discerning. Yes, Shante. We are horrible at discerning almost anything. We're just bad at it. As soon as we see a woman right away, we want to mount her. <laughs> and I get it. I get the carnality. I get it. We bulls, or we we got these the t testosterone, and we get. I get it. I I I I was that way for long for years. You know, I just look at her. I see a woman. I go right to her behind. I get it, man. I get it. And some of us still got that in the. I, you know, I ain't gonna lie to you. Some of y'all still got a nice little shape. I get it. I just don't be looking like that no more because I just don't want to. I just don't. I just don't want to get caught up in that. Especially those of you who are. You, anyway, and so I get it. But we think that the the nice breasts and the behind and the nice legs and all this stuff, we think that that right there, ooh, this is gonna be the greatest relationship ever. And then we get caught in this relationship. We trying to get out. We're like, please, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, please, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, you hear me, Jesus? Listen, listen, Linda, Linda, Linda. <laughs> Y'all get to call him Jesus, Linda. Linda, Linda, listen, listen, listen. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. She, this woman that thou gave me beguiled me. He like, I didn't give you that woman. That was your lust. What? Okay, okay, okay. You're right. You got me on that. My bad. My bad, Jesus. My bad. Uh, can you get me out of this one? I promise you, if you just get me out of this one, I'll never... I'll never ever go back to that life again, Jesus. Jesus! <laughs> he said, all right, all right, all right, son. All right. I'm going to let you out of this one. Be careful next time. I thank you. Thank you, son. Thank you much, obliged. And then, just a few months later, woo-wee, girl. What's your name? Becky. Woo, Becky. Becky, come here, Becky. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. That was me. And then I'm laying in bed with Becky. Because I, I didn't know Becky had a mental illness. <laughs> I ain't know Becky had a mental I didn't know. I didn't know she swang like that. I ain't know. And I'm like, Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! Jesus, uh, oh, you you here? Hey, hey, Jesus, how you doing? <clears throat> how, how'd your day? It's going all right? You got any wars you need to take care of? Anybody you need? Any pestilences? Nothing like that. No flies and frogs. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Listen, the reason why I called you here was because, well, I got this problem. Yes, son. Well, you remember... You remember that other girl a few months ago? Well, see, this is this, this is what happened. <laughs> I'm gonna make a deal with you. I'm gonna make a deal with you. Your grace. I heard about your grace, Jesus. Just bear with me, Jesus. Bear with me. I heard about your grace, 
Your grace is given to men who don't know. My my dad told me that you take care of babies and fools, right? Wait, hold up, Jesus. You told me that you take care of babies and fools, right? Yes. Well, I'm 52, so I'm not a baby. I'm the biggest fool you ever want to see. <laughs> can, you, can you give me a second chance? Pastor Bobo said you're the god of a second chance. Ah, I'm feeling this in my chandelier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm not Catholic. I was about to give you a few Hail Marys. How is your mama, by the way? She all right? What's she doing right now? She, she sleep. All right. Don't wake her. Don't wake her. Can I get a second chance, Jesus? I'll go get some vittles. <laughs> what y'all saying here? Because I sure want some Popeyes. That explains why women look at the, uh, each other like, what in the world? And <laughs> look at him. <laughs> Chate, uh, you pick up the right, the right message. The problem is being able to run the other way. Run, Forrest. Run. Becky <laughs> Y'all cracking me up. Jesus, see, what had happened was, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, how many conversations did Jesus have to have? We in the hotel, right? And uh, uh, y'all know the Bible called the Gideon? Yeah. <laughs> so Gideon is in, in the drawer. In the drawer. That's the drawer, y'all. The Gideon is in the drawer. Minding his own business. Thank God for the Gideon Society. And you laying in that bed because she just changed you to the bed with handcuffs, all right? And you butt naked. And she done stole all your clothes and your money. And she left one hand available. And the other one is chained to the bedpost. And you say, Jesus! <laughs> Jesus, well, hold on. I ain't got to call him. This is a hotel. There's a Bible up under this. And you go to pull out the, with the one hand. And you see Gideon and you say, okay, now, what did Pastor Bobo say when you were in these predicaments? <laughs> Cynthia. <laughs> so now he's trying to open up a memory verse. He, he opened up a he opened up a memory verse and he don't know any. <laughs> Cause he fell asleep in Sunday school. So he opened it and said, Jesus wept. Now that ain't the one. That ain't the one. That ain't, that ain't the one. See, never mind. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, hey, hey. How you doing? You doing all right? Good, good. How your father doing? Father good. Then yeah, what he doing? He on the. Is he on the right side of you? On the left side? I, I fell asleep and say, yeah, yeah. I know I fell asleep. Listen, listen. <laughs> I got, I, I got this problem. I know, I know, I know, I know what you're going to say. I, I got this problem. Listen, listen. She was a missionary at the church, Jesus. Yeah. She, she was a missionary. Yeah. Widowed and everything. She spoke in tongues on Sunday. She served communion. Yeah, Jesus. I can't even look at you, Jesus. I can't even look. I don't even know. Uh, and he's not thinking about scriptures at that time. <laughs> oh my God! Today, I'm trying to tell y'all this. Is what I've gone through that. You still talking? <laughs> save, save something for book release, can y'all? <laughs> oh my God! Oh man! And he chained to the. He chained and he's shaking the thing like shake, shake it over here, boss. He's shaking it because he's hoping the person next door, you know, them them. Them twenty dollar hotel rooms where you get four hours. He's shaking it real hard, and he said, "Yeah, I gotta stop shaking because they think that we we doing it." He don't want to scream because it's embarrassing because he got chained and he naked. And um, she left one hand loose so that he could call zero to get the guy to come up. I'm not gonna tell y'all to ask me how I know. That didn't happen to me, by the way. How's the how's the ghost <laughs> dancing? How's the ghost doing? See, I should have put that in my skit. Jesus, <laughs> um, how, 
how to go <laughs> how to go store first name holy he doing a he down here he he is pastor bobo did say something about you blew on some brothers down here. Remember when you were down, you were, you blew on them and you said, oh, I get it now. Oh, my God. <laughs> I got to go. Uh, be sure and tip your waiter. I'll be here all week. I'll be on the Lady Rochelle show, Warriors Talk, tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central as I talk about my book called The Four Women That Men Desire. Tomorrow, Monday... Uh, what's the date? Anybody know what the date is tomorrow? It's November the 12th. Uh, the Four Women That Men Desire, 7 o'clock on Facebook Live or UrbanBroadcastMedia.com. Listen to the show live, all right? We're going to talk about some really racist stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. I saved the good stuff for the book. Got to go if anybody going to go live, let me know and tag me. I'll watch you because I love to support the people. Um, I'm getting ready to do a show this week about I'm going back to branding. And I promised y'all that I would go to the whiteboard to finish my theology. All right? So, convocation is over. Thank you, Jesus. It's time to get back to the whiteboard and do some good old teaching. All right? So, here we are. You preach, teach, and did a whole skit. I'm tired. <laughs> the four women and men desire being released when? Uh, Valentine's Day, 2019. Valentine's Day, that's February the 14th, 2019. Go to Amazon.com. There it is. <clears throat> Some of y'all going to get <clears throat> a book or several because you've been pouring into the ministry. God has been good to me. Sometimes I wake up to a cash app and it go, bing, it be uh, 20 bucks. 30 sometimes it's 200 dollars for people say i believe in you here is some money to help you get this book going god is good to me and so those people i'm gonna be throwing books at them and let them just pass it out to whoever they want to to bless them with it all right so those of you sometimes ask me how to give well the, the cash app is sir walter sir walter j sir walter j i think yeah it's the cash app in or go to paypal and my email is giftedfriends at AOL.com. Yeah, I'm the only one in America that still use AOL.com. A tithe's teaching was something else, bro. Oh, thank you, brother Bass. I can't fool with that tithe stuff no more because that upsets the people. Um, thank you. Thank you, Demetri Pitts. Gosh, I, I, I appreciate you. Um... I'm, I'm, I'm starting a class on how to uh, expand your ministries and your businesses. I'm starting a class on how to expand it through social media, through Facebook ads and through Instagram and the YouTube and what have you. I'm starting that class, okay? And, uh, um, and um, so get ready for that. You're, you're going to be seeing some things go on. Yeah, you're going to be seeing some stuff out there. Get ready for that because some of you, I, I'm choosing about 10 people. I'm personally choosing them, uh, and I'm getting ready to expose their brands, all right? So if you have a show that you do, or a brand, a book, or a product, or what have you, or services, I'm getting ready to select 10 people, and I'm going to give them private counseling on how to get their brand out there to the masses, I'm going to show you the portal and how it was taught to me and how I do it. Uh, and um, I'm looking for, all I'm looking for are testimonials. That's all I want. So some of you will be looking for, be looking out for some contacts. Because I don't want to be contacting some of you because I've seen some of your works. Mm -hmm. Whatever your brand is and you're trying to get it out there, inbox me. Let me know what that is, okay? I gotta go. I love y'all with the love of Jesus. And there's nothing you can do about it. Sir Walter Jones Show. <laughs>